Welcome back to my wood shop here. Uh, today I want to just clarify something up that we've done in a couple videos uh, is the tool rest height adjustment uh, and, and how we go on and really set that up and just zero in on that part. Uh, the two tools I'm going to uh, introduce to you today is, is the uh, roughing gouge and the parting tool. This is the two tools that are used a lot in spindle turning uh, and uh, you know, you use the parting tool in bow turning. So, but I really wanted to express that over here on the lathe. So let's go to my lathe. Okay, as we're over here at the lathe, uh, one thing I want you to uh, focus on is that I have drawn the crosshairs all the way across this block of wood. Uh, and this one line that is, I want it to run parallel with my bed. Okay. The main thing of cutting with, um, Anytime a gouge, uh, the spindle gouge, a roughing gouge, a bow gouge, whether it's a spindle blank or a, a, a bow blank, is that I want my cutting edge of that uh, tool to be at center axis. What do I mean by center axis? Is that the distance, uh, it's, it's the points between your live center and your spur. Now, once you get that point in between there is the center axis. So with this line drawn all the way across there and getting the height of my tool rest raised up to where my cutting edge is at center axis, just like this right here, and we can we can see that. So as I go through this block of wood, my, my center axis goes along that, and I can follow that uh, tool rest all the way down, and I can trim this off. I, I do it this way so that you can learn to draw a straight line across a block of wood. Uh, then, you know, your center axis is so, so important. If I'm below that, I'm not going to get a good cut. And if I'm up above that, I'm not going to get a good cut. So the main thing is get your cutting edge right here, right here, at your center axis right here. And I got that line parallel with my bed, and that's my center axis. So that's where you want to be with this tool. Okay, now, uh, setting your tool rest, the height, of, that was the height of it at center axis. Now, the banjo, which is holding the tool rest, will slide in and out. And uh, you want, starting out with that roughing gouge, I want to be about, you know, maybe an eighth inch away from there. And then I lock it down. And you always spin it to make sure it don't hit the tool rest anywhere up and down through there. So when, when that happens, uh, your uh, banjo is what moves you in. After you make a couple passes across that block of wood, you want to loosen your banjo and slide it in. You don't want to move the height adjustment. Once you have this height adjustment, it doesn't matter if you're out here or really close in here after you get that piece of wood cut down. You just keep sliding it in. Now, one thing I want to caution you on is don't have an inch difference between your tool rest and your block of wood here. You want to close that thing in, okay? Except for one thing is that when you have your parting tool, this tool right here, and you got this point down here, you do not... You want to have the tool rest back far enough that where this point right here doesn't come up over your tool rest. So when you start using your parting tool, the flat part right here needs to be down on the tool rest, just like that. A lot of people make that mistake and they want to come up over that hump. Don't do that. Move your banjo back with the tool rest on it far enough to where you're hitting on the flat spot down here. That'll save you a lot of trouble down the road. And uh, let's uh, go go back over to the wood stove and let's talk about this. Okay, I hope that gives you a little bit of insight on these two tools uh, and, and all your gouges. Uh, this is so important when you're cutting and starting out to get that tool rest height adjustment in and out. Uh, other thing I want to show you is uh, the last video we had a natural edge bow. This thing's dry now. Uh, the next step would be to go on and flatten this bottom, put it back on the lathe, and uh, I'll flatten that bottom, and then I'll get some coats of finish on it. I'll put about three coats of uh, lacquer sanding sealer, and then I will put about, you know, three to four, five coats of uh, clear lacquer on it until I get the sheen that I really want. 
thank you for watching my video. Hope this give you give you some insight on it. And uh, like and subscribe. Hit that uh, button up on the top, and I'll send you a video uh, at, uh, when I make a new one. Uh, hey, happy turn, and God bless. Thanks.